This is the Bike B60 Beaumont, and you're watching Car Guide PH. Hey guys, I'm Nix, and thank you for watching Car Guide Philippines. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're new, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And if you're watching this on Facebook or you caught this on Facebook, consider liking the Facebook page. And if you want more detailed reviews of the cars that Yuli tests in the Philippines, check out carguide.ph. Okay, without out of the way, let us go to the review of the bike B60 Beaumont. So as you can see, we're not in our usual warehouse location. We're actually here by the beach because I wanted to test the off-road capabilities of the bike B60 Beaumont. And we'll get to those results later. But right now, let's talk first about the bike B60. When you see a car that's taller than me, you can tell it is big. I'm a six foot guy and with the bike B60, it's really big. When you look at its measurements, it is considered a full-size SUV. And when you consider everything that it has, it's actually on the premium side of things. The unit you see right here, as of this time of recording, is worth 3.188 million pesos. So I'm saying the price right now because with that price tag, we'll be comparing it against other full-size premium SUVs. Just like other full-size SUVs are skewed more to off-roading, it has this nice, masculine, imposing front over here, this front grille. And it's armed with full LEDs that are quad bulb, so there are four bulbs over here. As for the wheels, it comes with the R18s, and for a vehicle this large, that's actually more on the off-road side of things. Because vehicles this big, you usually see with R19s or even R20s. But in this case, it has R18s and with really chunky tires. So you can really see that the B60 is really positioning itself to be off-road capable. And then I like here, if you see on the sides, I like that it has a step board. So it allows for easier access. And at the back, you get a nice flat profile because it is a swing tailgate. Very classic, reminiscent of the older SUVs. And a nice touch to it, which I personally like, it has a spare tire that can be seen at the back. Very off-road centric. The bike B60 Beaumont comes with a 2-liter turbocharged diesel engine that produces 163 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. So on one end, the bike B60 sounds powerful with those numbers. But on the other end, when you look at its competitors that have 300 plus horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque, then you can see that when you're up against other full-size premium SUVs. This, in terms of power and torque, is on the back end of that list. So, to keep in mind, especially when we talk about how this car drives. Okay, as you can see, this is a relatively large vehicle, but as you can also see, when I enter the car, it actually moves the seat all the way back. So, uh, thanks to the step board, it is easier to hop into this vehicle. The dashboard, it's soft leather all throughout with this nice brown color. It's actually really nice. And then here, it's a digital rear view monitor. So instead of like, you know, a mirror to see the back, it's actually like a camera. And on the daytime, the camera's really nice. But on the nighttime, I noticed I was having a hard time seeing what's behind me. So aside from the fantastic interior, one of the other things I do have to commend Bayek and the B60 Beaumont is the screens that they use. So for the instrument cluster, it's actually full digital and it's 10.25 inches. I like the layout of like the information. It, it's flanking on the side, so it's not disturbing. And the pixel density is excellent. And here for the infotainment system, it's a 12.8 inch digital system. The screen clarity is excellent. Everything's sharp, it responds well. The color projection's really nice. It's such a fantastic infotainment system. The unfortunate downside is this has no Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It comes with car bit mirroring system. So you have to either plug your phone or wirelessly through Wi-Fi, you can mirror your phone. And like after testing it, it was a bit cumbersome. And there were a few times where my phone actually got disconnected. For me, for such an excellent screen, it's a really big missed opportunity for it to not have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. 
maybe Bike Philippines can have a, like a software update or something to include it. I really hope so because it, it's such a waste of a really good screen. When I was using screen mirroring, it's like, yeah, looking at all the Android stuff like Waze, Google Maps, it, it looked really good. The problem was I couldn't control it through the screen because it was just mirroring. I had to do it through my phone which if you don't want to get distracted while you're driving. Very big missed opportunity. I wish it's had Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And then you have wireless charging over here. You have your climate control over here. So this is the one climate, this is another climate, and then the passengers have their own climate. And then you have your shifter over here. What I do dislike though, is it's easily movable. You can see I can flick it accidentally. And like you can, I'm not sure we can hear it, but the tactile sensation, it's very, it's its soft. its It doesn't feel like something that has to be shifted deliberately. But I do like the design. I like that, you know, the park buttons over here, they flushed it over here. And then the reverse, neutral drive. And then here you have your controls for everything off-road. With the Bike B60 Beaumont, what I do like is their drive modes over here. So let's cycle through them. So there's Sport, Eco, Comfort, snow, through, and reading through, uh, cross-country, long-distance crossing with bumpy roads. Okay, so it's like uh, like Baja, sort of. And then there's sand, where which we are in now. There's mud, there's rock, and there's uh, wading, so water wading, so slow speed. And what's I nice, it actually gives tips to how to use these. So what I like about the driving system of the Bike B60 is that when you go to terrains that require four-wheel drive, it actually switches to 4H right away. And then what I like is when you go back to road use, so comfort mode, it automatically switches back to 2H. You don't have to like guess, oh, which setting should I use? It does it for you. With the Bike B60, you also have crawl control and a rear locking differential. So when it comes to off-roading, the Bike B60 Beaumont is actually very handy it has a lot of tools it has a lot of driving modes it's easy to use and then you have your 540 degree parking camera setup so you have the whole view around the car and i have to say paired with an excellent screen are really good cameras and with that i think the whole 540 degree camera system with the bike b60 beaumont is something that a lot of manufacturers should aspire for controversial take for me it says on the brochure, and you can see here, it comes with 12 plus one infinity speakers. But while listening to my music, I'm a bit doubtful if they're actually infinity speakers. So don't quote me on that, but at the same time, like uh, take it to the grain of salt that the speaker system, it's supposed to be premium, but it doesn't sound as premium. But it could be just me, you know, different users may vary. So as you can see, the Beaumont B60, in terms of the equipment it comes with and with the design and implementation, it, it's on the premium side of things. At least it comes with handlebars over here and with the step board. So when it comes to entering, it's relatively easy. And as you can see, the sitting position for the driver, it's almost all the way back. I have a good amount of leg room and definitely a good amount of headroom. And then when it comes to shoulder room, it's very generous with shoulder room. Three of me will fit. Maybe a very tiny discomfort, but will fit nonetheless. With two people, there's so much room here. And here it comes with a nice armrest over here, with charging ports over here, and also charging ports over here. How cool is that? And the charging ports, it's type C and then type A. So the regular USB and the USB type C. And then there are cable throughs over here. So you can leave your phones here on this rubberized mat over here. Click here, boom, cup holders. You have nice cup holders over here. So if you're using this as a chauffeur car, you can actually move the passenger seat in front of you. The controls are here on the side. And then you have air vents over here. But I like it's nice and high so that it's not hitting your knee. It can, it can aim towards your body. And then what's also nice is it comes with the fan controls over here. So you can increase the air, the fan over here. And then uh, the temperature over here, you can adjust. There you go. Here at the back, you have so many charging options. You have a Type C, a USB A over here. You have the usual cigarette lighter uh, port over here. You have a 
cabin over here and then you have a 150 watt outlet over here that's 220 so if you have a laptop an old school laptop or a laptop that needs to be plugged because you don't want to buy new batteries you can plug your laptop over here how cool is that and if you're using this on an off-road kind of a thing like you can plug in a car refrigerator over here with standard plugs and if you're using a chauffeur car with a date you have a nice panoramic sunroof over here the bike b60 as you can see it's very premium and off-road at the same time in terms of execution i really like it so before we drive let us look at the trunk of the bike b60 beaumont and then little reference here's the rear view camera so if you do have this make sure you keep it clean as clean as possible and now uh, to this huge swinging tailgate uh, and here uh what you can see here you can lock it so it stays locked like that and then unlock uh, pretty cool feature if you ask me and then there are easter eggs around the car this is one of them there's a nice pocket over here so if you're overlanding and you have your cooking setup over here, you can put stuff over here. And then you have hooks over here, up to three kilograms. And one thing I really appreciate about the bike B60 and proof that it really is trying to be an off-roader is that it has this plastic cladding over here, which makes you know cleaning up so easy. So if you're gonna put muddy items like your shoes or your camping gear that got muddy, you don't have to worry about clean up because it's easy with this. And here, my camera case, size reference of how huge the rear is. It's such a huge uh, trunk space over here. And if need be, you have a 60-40 split with also with the same hard plastic cladding over here. And what's also cool is that you have the cigarette lighter port over here if you have those uh, gadgets that use it. And for the classic gadgets, you have a 220 volt, 150 watt outlet over here also. So as you can see through the trunk of the bike B60 Beaumont, it's really trying to be that uh, off-road glamping vehicle. So yeah, you gotta appreciate this car. If in the front, it's all about being premium. In the rear here, it's all about being hard utilitarian. And, and I think it's really a good implementation. You can really see that bike, when they designed this vehicle, there's a lot of intent on what the bike B60 is supposed to be. So this is my driving impression of the bike B60 Beaumont. Okay, so we're still here at the sandy beach and because of that, I'm switching from eco mode to sand mode. So as you can see, the bike B60, when you're putting on the different drive modes, puts it on the ideal state on what it has to be. So on, uh, in this case, it is uh, traction control off four-wheel drive high and then it even tells me here that uh, don't forget that you're in 4h so don't go above 60 kilometers per hour and it's you know it, it may seem redundant but i like that the bike b60 beaumont it's very beginner friendly so if you are the type of person who doesn't really go off-road that they just go off-road once in a while i like all these tips and tricks because it educates the driver especially if they're new. So like what I said a while ago, when you look at this against its competitors in the full-size premium SUV, the power and the torque, it's almost half compared to them. So you might be thinking, oh, this car's underpowered. But the truth is it's not underpowered. I'm going through like a sandy beach on sand mode and it's driving just fine. Like I'm still able to turn on a relatively good radius. It's not hindering. There's enough power for me to go around and go around pretty quick. So if you're wondering, is this car really capable of driving off-road? Well, we did, we did drive through a mud area, so I'll, I'll be showing you later. But as of now, I can confidently say yes. It has what it takes to drive the different drive modes. Now we're in the more uh, sandy part of the beach and yeah, it still drives well. It's still very capable. We avoid that ditch. Well, yeah. Okay, and you know, on the off-road, in the off-road point of view, the suspension is actually good. I'll show you the on-road behavior later. In terms of off-road capability, it is pretty obvious that the bike B60 is more than capable. 
But then when you start comparing it to its competitors with like what I said, double the power and double the torque, then you will be like, okay, if those are serious off-roaders, this is more of like a glamping kind of a vehicle or you know, like more posh than anything. With not being said, we're near the road, so let us go to my road impressions of the car. So with my usual 100 plus kilometer highway test, the fuel efficiency of the bike B60 Beaumont hits 14.5 kilometers per liter, which actually sounds pretty good, but with other vehicles uh, like diesel pickups, I can achieve around 16 kilometers per liter. But you have to also consider this is a full-size SUV. So there's weight, there's size, there's wind resistance. And with all that being said, 14.5 is a very respectable number. On the highway, the bike B60 is really comfortable. It, it's like a yacht, but just like a yacht, on the open waters, it's such a comfortable boat. But when you start bringing it through canals, I can imagine that it's, it starts being harder to maneuver. And in the case of the bike B60, sure, you have all the cameras and gadgets and gizmos and sensors on the bike B60 but it is just a huge vehicle to drive. So it's like, I'm not saying it's bad, it's just something you will have to get used to. And then, you know, when going through sharp turns and when handling really deep potholes at slow speeds, you start to feel that, you know, that bouncing booty feel <laughs> that goes like that. And it's not bad because those are not often occasions, but just something to note that when it does happen, that's the behavior. So, who is this car for? When you're looking at vehicles like this, especially when you're considering off-roading, drivetrain plays a huge part on the buying decision. With that being said, with the power and torque of the bike B60 versus its competitors, this one looks more of a glamping vehicle versus an overlanding or an off-road vehicle. But with that being said, there is some charm to the bike B60. When you look at the different parts of the car, there's a lot of things to be said that feel very premium. But then when you put everything together to form the sum of its parts, for one reason, it is just above okay. For serious off-roaders, I would suggest them to get another vehicle. But for those who are looking for a full-size premium SUV that's readily available, and they see themselves that you know, I'm going to be using this 95% in the city and on the occasional once or twice a year glamping trip. This vehicle's actually pretty good. So, who is this car for? If you're looking for a relatively budget-friendly, premium full-size SUV with the occasional glamping, it's worth checking out the Bike B60 Beaumont.